Hi, this is Mike Peterson from Challenge Island, Oakland County. He's back with our Steamtastic Friday. We're just getting started into our cooking series here at Challenge Island. So last week we talked a little bit about the science of cooking and all the different ways things can get warmed up to make them taste really good. So if you haven't seen that one yet, please check that out. But today we're gonna to move on to the T in STEAM, which stands for technology. So I thought today we'd talk about one of our favorite kinds of technology when it comes to cooking uh, here at Challenge Island, which is the microwave. So let me tell you a couple quick stories about how microwaves work and where they came from. So first off, uh, just to go back into science for a little bit, microwaves have actually been around forever. So not microwave ovens, but microwaves themselves. So if you look at the word microwave, microwave so is made of two words. So micro meaning kind of small and wave meaning it's something that goes up and down, kind of like waves in the ocean. So in particular, microwaves are waves that go through the air and they're kind of small. So, so when we look at where they kind of fit in with all the other waves that go through the air, you can see here, for example, here in the middle are the kinds of waves we can see. Those are all the different colors, like the colors in the rainbow. If we move to the side of those, we have what's called infrared. So once we fall off the red end of the rainbow, there's some special kinds of red that we can't quite see next to there. Then after that, uh, down in the like 10 to or so centimeters range, in other words, the wave is about 10 centimeters in between each of the peaks of the wave. That's where the microwaves end up. So they're kind of in between radio waves and the waves we can see. So, so microwaves have always been around, but figuring out that we could cook with them was a much newer invention. So let me introduce you to a cool guy named Perry Spencer. So he worked for a company called Raytheon back in the 1950s, and he worked on microwaves. So back in those days, and even still today, they use microwaves to communicate so they can send signals through the air over microwaves and then send information back and forth. Well, one day Perry was working at his microwave station and he had a candy bar in his pocket. So when he realized when he got close to the microwave, his candy bar melted. So that got him thinking, hmm, I wonder what caused my candy bar to melt. So he started doing some experimenting with the microwaves coming out of his, of his radar dish that he had there. So he tried a, tried a candy bar, it melted. He tried some popcorn and it actually popped okay. Then he moved on to an egg. That kind of worked, except the egg kind of exploded. So he kind of made a mess that time. But after those few experiments, he figured out pretty quick that he was onto something. So, so he figured out how to get those microwaves into a big box. And that's what became our microwave of today. So you can see this one here from the 50s. It's a little bit bigger than they are today. So today they're a little more compact, a little easier to fit into your kitchen. So really quickly, let me tell you a little bit about how they really work. So it comes down to a little bit of chemistry and a little bit of microwaves working together. So what a microwave does is that the waves go into the food. They can get into about an inch or an inch and a half of the food. They can't go all the way through it because they're not that quite, quite that strong. But what they do is they go into the food and they start hitting the water molecules in food. So if you think about it, pretty much any kind of food, unless it's really, really dry, is going to have some water in it. So the water molecules, they're made of two hydrogens and an oxygen molecule, so or the oxygen atom, so kind of like a Mickey Mouse when you look at it. Now the hydrogens, they have kind of a positive charge to them, so that's why we put the plus on the hydrogen side. And the oxygens have kind of a negative charge on them. So that means it's kind of it's what we call a dipole, so it's kind of positive at one end, negative at the other end. So when the water molecules get hit by the microwaves, when those waves come through, it wants to try and line up with them, so, so it doesn't keep getting hit around by those microwaves. So here's one way to kind of picture that. So, so if we draw a wave and draw the microwaves kind of coming into the food, hitting those water molecules, it's gonna bounce those water molecules around and make them kind of vibrate. So when they do that, when it vibrates, that releases some energy, which creates heat, which causes the stuff to warm up inside your microwave. So, so basically what they did when they made the microwave, just to show you a really basic one here, so if you look inside your microwave, you'll usually see on one side of it, there's a, like a special box or some special, special grills in there. What's inside that part is called the magnetron. So that's the part that creates the microwaves, which sends them out into the big open area. And then whatever's in there that's got water in it, so any kind of food, all those water molecules start bouncing around and then they heat up and that heats up the food. So next time you warm up, a hot dog or an egg or some popcorn or anything like that. Let's thank Mr. Spencer for coming up with that really cool invention of the microwave so we can get our food a lot faster and have a lot more fun with it.
All right, with that, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you again next time.